Hey, hello YouTubers. Welcome back to my channel. This is Tony FL. Today, I want to discuss and share with you uh, an, an interesting project that I got going on. And uh, on this table, I got two Air Venturi Avengers that I got some mods done to them. And today, we are going to do a little modification to this one. Um, I, have, I have already done it. To that one and it's shortening the barrel shroud as we all know these guns are kind of long and they kind of look exaggerated with the uh, the length of the uh, the rifle so what I'm doing is I'm actually shortening the barrel to make it a, just a little bit compact I was actually thinking about cutting the barrel down but then again I said you know let me hold on with that because I didn't want to mess with the, the twist of the, the barrel. So, this rifle here is a 25 caliber Air Venturi Avenger. And this is a 25 caliber Air Venturi Avenger. And what I did is, I actually took the shroud off and I shortened it by 3 inches. And... The tools that you're going to need, I got them here displayed on the table. I'm sure you can't see them now, but in a minute I'll show you what you're going to need. So, um, I took the, uh, the initiative of doing this because I kind of felt that I needed to make that these guns look a little more compact. And uh, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this one and shorten this shroud without affecting the accuracy of the gun without affecting the harmonics on the gun and without affecting the attached uh, moderator uh, adapter and still be able to use your silencers effectively so you guys hang in tight and we'll be right back okay youtubers we're back and let me get this 22 Avenger off this table so we can make some room for what we're about to do here. So the tools that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a set of pliers, some Allen keys, depending on what barrel bands you have, you'll know what type of screw, uh, what screws sizes are there. A 13 millimeter wrench, a roll of duct tape, a uh, inch and a half to two inch 13 millimeter nut and bolt with two washers, some extra Allen keys just in case we don't have the right size here. And by the way, we will be installing this uh, power plenum to this 25 caliber, which was purchased from Air Gun Archery, and it costs like 50 bucks, something like that. A drill, and I'm just using these two uh, channel locks to tighten the drill so when I'm doing uh, what I got to do to this rear piece back here, uh, you'll, you'll see what's going on. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so we're going to grab the rifle, I'm going to spin this thing around for a minute, let me get this out of the way. First things first, we're going to remove the scope. I got this loose already, so, you know, if you guys have any scopes on your rifles, you remove it, you know, just to, just to get you to work a little more comfortable on your gun. Set it off to the side. Next thing is, we're going to take this barrel band off, and that is on my gun, I believe it's a two and a half. I got a two and a half Allen key. I'm going to loosen these screws. Then we're going to slide this barrel band off with the uh, bipods all in one shot. Set that off to the side. We're going to take this moderator cap off. And let me slide this. And, and you know, this is something that gets me about the. Uh, Air Venturi Avenger, and I'm sure you guys might be running into this. 
it's got these two Allen, Allen screws here, one on each side, and there's nothing here. And they actually removed that screw from here, which actually holds this band from moving because it pinches up against the uh, air cylinders. So this technically is loose. It just slides right off. I mean, I, I just don't see the, uh, the sense of that, but hey, it is what it is. So let's just make sure let's unload this gun. Sure we're not loaded put this gun on safety because we're not touching the air cylinders and this gun does have air in it so be cautious I'm gonna do this cautiously we have no rounds in the uh, in the gun and it's in safe so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the barrel shroud and um, let's get that done See here. Let me place this down for a second here. This uh, moderator adapter has two holes, which helps you break it free. You just unscrew it. You have to take it off if you have one, so that you can measure your cut. Then now what we're going to do is we're going to just break loose this this uh, shroud. Give me a second here. Um, yeah, I don't want to use that. One second. can't find my strap so I'm gonna try to use this without scuffing up my uh, my barrel well I'm gonna break it loose from the back end because we're gonna cut from the back so I'll just break it loose from back here I got some tape wrapped around the channel lock so that the teeth don't scar up the, the shroud let me see if I can grab it uh, There we go. She broke loose. Scuffed it up a little. But that's alright because we're gonna we're gonna cut that end off anyway. Some threads are pretty snug in there. So we got our shroud off. We're gonna set that off to the side. Now you're gonna reposition this. Your if you have a bottle, use your bottle band with your bipods because you need to hold this gun up for a moment. So I'm just gonna slide it up in here to the two lower uh, to the two lower cylinders and hold it up. So the next step is. We're going to take your adapter, and you, as you can see, your adapter has breathing breather holes where the exhaust gases will come out and go into, to, uh, into your shroud. So you're going to slide that in, and you're going to set your barrel just about a sixteenth of an inch before the hose on the uh, adapter. 
Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your tape measure. This plastic piece here that holds the barrel centered on your main chassis there has an O-ring on it. So you're going to take your tape measure and you're going to place it up against the edge there. Up against the edge and you're going to measure all the way up to the edge of the uh, moderator adapter there. Okay. And this, this particular gun is going to measure 21 inches. Okay. And that's where I'm going to cut this one. My last one, I cut it at 20. Wait a minute. Let me, let me check this again. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It's 20 inches and three quarter. That's your cut. 20 inches and three quarter. But that is my cut based on the settings. I The, the, the uh, stuff that I have on my gun. Your gun might be a little different. So always take your measurement. So you're going to come back to the edge there and you measure to the uh, edge of the uh, moderator to the where the threads end at and that's where you're gonna cut so I'm looking at 20 and 3 quarter and that's my cut so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my the back side I, I scuffed this up Trying to break it loose there. So what I'm going to do is the front end of the the, the front end of the shroud. I'm going to start measuring from there, and I'm going to get my 20 and three quarter inch measurement there. The shroud actually measures 23 and a little over a quarter inch. I would say 23 and a quarter inch. That's how long this shroud is. So what I'm gonna do, what we're gonna do is, let me show you here for a second. Okay, let me extend this just a bit more. Lock it down. Line this up. Okay, I'm gonna grab myself a piece of tape. And the reason for the tape is that we're going to wrap it around the shroud approximately where we're going to cut. Okay? And this tape is being used to protect the shroud from any scuff marks that you can create while using your pipe cutter. So now we're gonna, we got the tape where we want it. And now we're gonna set our mark. And let me get a, a marker here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is after installing that tape, we're gonna mark on that tape your cut. So we got 20 and three quarter. Okay, that's my cut. So my next step would be to grab my pipe cutter and I'm going to align the cutting wheel to that line and we're going to take off that excess inches. Okay, so we're lined up, we're lined up, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, I got the uh, cutting wheel lined up to my mark, and what we're going to do is we're just going to gradually turn it, and the, by using a pipe cutter you're going to get a perfect cut, and as you can see, we're getting scuff marks on the tape, and that's the purpose for the tape, so you don't scuff up the paint on your shroud, and just gradually spin it around, and slightly turn it and tighten it slightly turn it and tighten it 
you know you can go backwards if you'd like and slightly turn it and tighten it and keep going so you get a nice clean cut Almost there. We're almost there. Okay. So we just got rid of that, those extra inches on the shroud that are just making the gun look, I guess, exaggerated long extremely long you remove your tape and as you can see we got no scuff marks and it's a clean cut now what you're gonna have to do after that is you're gonna have to get a little file where is my file oh bear with me guys you grab yourself a file I picked this up at a Harbor Freight. It's a, they come in a set, you know. And as you can see, I already have some filing marks from the other barrel. And what you're going to do is you're going to clean off the shavings on the inside of your shroud. You have to do that. So just gradually turn it and, and move it inside and out. And turn it slightly. And just keep going. And, and when you do this, do it on a, on a pitch, on, a, on an angle. You don't go flat up against it. Do it on an angle so you're only shaving off the, uh, the beveled edge. And you slightly turn it. You can feel you cleaned it off pretty much by passing your finger through it. You got a nice smooth cleanness. Let's get your finger in there and get the little dust that's in there. And there you go. Now what we're gonna do is you're gonna take this, the uh, the adapter off, and we're gonna slide this in just to see. Just, so, just to show you. The length of the barrel shroud now. And we got to try to get it on here now. That's our next step. As you can see, it's not going to screw on. So, unfortunately, the next step is we got to remove this. And we have to remove this because now we got to work this piece. So this here is a two millimeter screw. Just unscrew this, slide this off, set it off to the side there. Now up here you have a screw. Let me move this over here so you guys can get a better look. There's an Allen, uh, an Allen grub screw up here. And you want to get that loose. Just bring it up. Okay. And this slides out. Okay. So, what we're going to do next is, if you see, there's a little dowel pin there. That's to keep this centered on your, on your barrel. And, uh, I got a little lube in here. <laughs> okay, so what you're gonna do is you grab yourself a plier and just pull out that dial, that little dial. It comes right out, and you, once you're done, you just can put it right back in. Then you're gonna grab yourself 
your nut and bolt with the two washers and you're gonna you're gonna set the threaded in the threaded end outward because the flat end here is going up against the drill so you want to keep away from that and you're gonna place this with a washer and a nut and bolt and you're gonna tighten that together because you're gonna place this on your drill you try to just center it as much as you can unless you get a nut and bolt that actually fits snug in that diameter of the hole um, okay then we're gonna tighten this Not too much, you don't want to crush it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to place this on the drill. Okay, and just tighten it. Oh, wait a minute. Minor technical difficulties here. I might have a short screw, not long enough to do what I want to do. We'll figure it out now. Yeah. Let me let me see if I can uh, find the other one I used. Okay, guys. So I, I actually changed the screw real quick. My apologies. What we're gonna do is that grub screw that we unscrewed out. We gotta make sure you you get it back in. Because you're going to be doing a little sanding here. You're going to reduce the height of these threads. You're not going to take the, co the threads completely off. But you're going to reduce the height. Just enough where you can get the shroud in. And still be able to thread it on. Snug and tight. So here we go. You're going to get yourself some coarse sandpaper. You cut them into uh, half inch strips. And... Try to center your, your your piece on the bolt as much as you can. I mean, I know it's gonna be a little wobbly here, but uh, sometimes it's a little hard to find the exact diameter bolt. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab that strip of sandpaper and hold it like that and slide it over. Just let the drill do its thing. Gradually, go taking some off and see if you can get it on. If, if you see you can't, just continue on. Gradually re reducing the uh, thickness or the diameter of the threads. You're not going to hurt this piece at all. I, so don't worry about that because this is hard plastic. Again, it's almost there. Adjust a little more. So drop something there. Continue to do this till you get the shroud to slide in and uh, you'll know just don't overdo it because you still want it to be tight. So 
So, folks, bear with me, and I'll be right back. Let me get this thing down to where it's got to be, and I'll show you the next step as soon as we get back. Okay. All right, people, so I got it down pretty much. As you can still see, there is still some thread on here. And I'm not concerned about the threads on here at all because either way, um, when you install your barrel bands, the barrel bands are still going to hold this shroud in place. Now, what you can do is you're going to drill a tiny little hole in there and you get a go to Ace Hardware or, or your local hardware store and get a, a small tiny screw where you can insert it a flat Phillips screwdriver where you can insert it in the hole down here but when you do that make sure that this is already on here so you can align your hole and just put two if you want you can put one or, or two one on each side just if you want to feel safe about it and, and you know it won't you know come off but let me show you I got it down and I'm just gonna screw it on here it's it's still tight and it's still screwing in now keep in mind there's no threads on this shroud because we cut them off but on the edge where we cut and I sanded down the uh, the shavings being that you're using the pipe cutter it, it creates a, a a, a slight a slight concaving effect on the pipe which allows it to be you know act as a thread and as you can see it's going in and you can just bottom it out now don't overdo it you got to gradually sand that plastic piece down Okay. All right. And there it is. I actually loosened the screw. But uh, there it is. So now let me take this back out. And don't don't go crazy. I mean, I'm trying to do it with the drill because you probably ruin it. Just do it manually. So, okay, so the next step is we're going to take this apart here, place it back on the barrel, secure it to the end of the barrel, and we're going to slide our, our, our uh, harmonic balancer or whatever this, or centering piece for the shroud goes, and we're going to put it back together. Now, I, before I go any further, guys, I want I, I want to let you guys know. The barrel is going to be shorter than the air tube that's on there already, but I'm not doing this for that purpose because I will be installing a fiber carbon uh, bottle on here, a carbon fiber bottle. So these two air tubes are going to be eliminated. So just to keep in mind, look at, look at the difference, how much we've cut off. Okay. So it's going to look funny if you do that and not change these two air, air cylinders. I don't recommend anybody doing this if you're not going to replace these two at the bottom. Because it doesn't make any sense. So I want you guys to understand that, that you know, I don't have the carbon fiber bottle yet. It's, it's in the mail, supposedly. <laughs> but uh, I did order it. And I also ordered from uh, Hajimoto the... Uh, bottle adapter to convert this and get rid of these two which I'll show you the the one I have on the other Avenger so once this gun is done and completed it's gonna pretty much look similar to the other one uh, the only difference that it is is that that's a 22 and that bottle is not a carbon fiber bottle it's an aluminum bottle so it's a little heavier so I decided to get a carbon fiber bottle for this one to keep it as light, as light as possible so let's put this back together and uh, I'll show you what we're looking at
Okay, guys, so we got the uh, the bottle end, the uh, shroud end off the drill. And you're going to get that little dial. And remember, that Allen key has to face upward. And your hole is on the right, so you want to keep it on your right. Put it back on the right side. And just shove it in with your finger, and you should be fine. Grab yourself that Allen key. Okay, and that's a two millimeter Allen key. You're gonna back that Allen screw out. Now remember, when you're sanding this down, you gotta get it down further enough without actually going completely through, just so you don't ruin the Allen screw when you're sanding it and, and you know, affect it. So now you can just back it out enough so you can be able to slide this piece back onto the barrel. And take it all the way down to the end and just position it where it's got to be okay make sure it sits flush against your your manifold there and just tighten that grub screw to secure it onto the barrel and we should be good all right beautiful Next thing is, uh, you got to slide this back on here. But before I do that, let me get some something I want to put on here. Let me see if I have it. Yeah, I don't. So, I don't, I don't have what I wanted to put there, which were the balancers. I thought I got it in the mail. But all right, we'll have, we'll have to come back to that next time. So, we're going to slide this in here again. Try to get it at least somewhat halfway here. Okay, and obviously your two millimeter Allen key. Wrong one, this is a two millimeter, that's two and a half. And just tighten that onto the barrel. Don't go crazy. And your cut end goes to the back, your threaded end comes to the front so before I do that let me show you what we're looking at so now we got this here let me turn this around so you can probably get a better view as you can see the barrel is not covering the holes and you can see my barrel there you see if I slide it back you can see the barrel right now I didn't I measured it specifically for that purpose so that these holes can ventilate so now if I place this here and here it's a perfect cut it might be a little off there we go that's a perfect cut so let's get going now we're gonna back this out we can actually screw this in here And we're going to slide the shroud in. Okay. And this is going to take a little effort. Because, like I said, that, that is going to be snug. So bear with me as I try to get this thing on there. The other gun was easier because I didn't have this cylinder on there. And I really don't want to take it off. So we're going to gradually work it in. There we go. Still got to thread it in. It's just going to be tighter than when you had the thread. So. Wow, that's tight. Can't get a good grip.
Bear with me. I'm gonna make this as easy as possible. My oil filter wrench strap. I'm gonna just use this and screw it on. Oh, wrong way. This is a lot easier. I think. There we go. It's going in. Just a little more. Just a little more. Ah, that should be just fine right there. Okay. And we're good to go. There it is, people. There it is. So... I just took about three inches off this barrel. I didn't affect the rifling of the barrel. I didn't affect the adapter ventilating, ventilation, ventilating hose so that whenever you're shooting, the blast goes into the shroud. The quiet, you know, they keep it quieter. And you can still use your moderator if you have a moder if you're gonna keep your tube on on your gun your your factory setup down here if you're gonna keep that then my suggestion is to get a uh, buck rail moderator that actually replaces this and actually I have one let me show you These are the two moderators made by Buckrail. This is the one I'm recommending if you decide to keep your bot your your two cylinders down here. You can re you can remove this one here. And you're still going to get the same effect. Because remember, they're both are going to go over the barrel. Now, this is a buck rail setup, and this is the uh, other one. So now, if you want to keep it that way, then this is the setup I would recommend you to do. I can't get it in because uh, what's going on here? Okay, so if you guys, going back, if you guys want to keep this bottle, these uh, factory bottles or cylinder, air cylinders, um, I got these two different moderators from Buckrail. Oop, sorry guys. Um, they sell one that'll fit onto this adapter. This is a half inch by 20 UNF. And they also sell this one here. And I just tried this one. I thought it would fit. It wouldn't. So my suggestion is to get the one that threads on. And this doesn't fit either. But they do have one that threads on to this. So that it will still get you your, silence, your silencing effect. And you can still keep your two bottles down here. Now remember I'm doing this because I'm actually doing a bottle conversion kit. So I'm not going to have these bo these uh, factory bottles on here anymore. But just to give you an idea, some, some food for thought, you know. Um, you can still keep your bottle, but you, you have to get a, a moderator that's as thin 
as your bottle that'll screw onto your adapter here. So there it is, guys, and uh, I will continue waiting on <laughs> my accessories to come in so I can finish this project. But my main purpose of this video was to show you how you can actually shorten your barrel by three inches. And uh, it makes it look a little more compact. And it's not going to affect your accuracy. It's not going to affect your, your shooting ability or anything. Okay, guys. So, as you can see, we got the barrel. So, we got the barrel shroud done. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to install this power platinum that I got I purchased from Airgun Archeries, and, and uh, like I said, it cost me give or take about fifty dollars, forty-five bucks, something like that. And it comes with two extra seals, and we're we're gonna add that to this gun here so for starters we need to degas this gun so you're gonna need a three millimeter allen key and just crack it loose degas the gun have to remove my chassis so bear with me and I'll be right back yep all right so remove the grip Let's set that off to the side screw for the chassis in the back okay. like that. and your chassis comes right off place that off to the side now back in here there's a little allen screw that holds this Make sure you back this out because if you try breaking this thing loose, you're going to ruin the threads on the cap and you need to use that cap on this other end. So that is, if I'm not mistaken, a two millimeter. Okay, let me see. No, it's not. Let's go two and a half. And a half. Bear with me, I can't even see. Ugh. It's actually smaller. So let's see what we got here. Find the right Allen key, huh? <laughs> when in doubt, just pour it on the table. Okay, let me see. You gotta most definitely find the right Allen key. Find your right size Allen key and pull that grub screw back. 
so you don't ruin the threads on this cap here, the bleed valve there. You don't want to ruin that. Okay, she's starting to show her herself there. Okay, so I got it pretty much sticking out. That's enough to make sure we're clear. Now, what I do is I'll, I'll get two Allen keys and I'll put them through the uh, little holes that the cap has. If you have a pair of snap ring pliers, you can. It'll be easier to do the uh, breaking it loose with that. I don't have any here at my job. So what I'll do is I'll just put two Allen keys in here and I'll grab a heavy duty Allen key here and I'll hold them together and just turn it and she comes right off. Just gotta gradually turn it and she just comes right off. You know it'll be it'll be a little snug because it's got it's got its O-ring on here. And, you know, just, gotta just be careful you don't ruin anything and be gentle about it. Okay, here we go. And we got our cap off. As you can see, there's our cap. Now, what you're going to do is, you're going to grab a little bit of lube here. You don't want to force these seals in there dry. So, let me get some lube. Okay, so, right now, what I did was I just grabbed myself a bottle of 100% uh, silicone lube. And I'm just going to put a couple of drops on the seals just to protect them when I thread this piece on and just ever so gently just get them damp you don't want to put too much lube on here I mean I'm sure it's not going to affect it but by the time <laughs> you get all that if you pour a lot in there you, you, you'll be seeing some puff of smoke coming out your barrel okay so we thread this thing on here Get it in there tight, hand tight. You don't, you don't have to go crazy. You don't need a flyer. You don't need no tools. Just hand tight till it sits flush against the manifold. Hand tight. Okay. Now you're gonna retorque that grub screw. Where did I put that Allen key? Here we go. <coughs> Place that Allen screw back into its uh, living space, and uh, get it all the way down, just snug enough to hold that from backing out or turning on you or threading itself out. That's the purpose of that tiny grub screw to keep it from turning, and just let's give it a nice little snug. All right, and we're done. Now you're gonna get your cap. It's already, we got plenty of lube in here, but let me just get a little dab. And spin it all the way around. And we're gonna put the cap on. I'm sure you guys have already seen these videos before. So it's all good. But I felt, I mean, you know, let me share some, something with you guys. Hand tight, get it all the way down till it sits flush. Make sure it bottoms down and you should be good right there. Get it 
tight, tight in there. Let me, let me just give it one final snug. It will bottom out and it'll sit at the bottom rest. And uh, let me just use my elbow here. And just give it a little snug with a key. Okay. And you're good to go. You're done. So now we're going to grab our chassis. By the way, this chassis is from AE Swede. Now this, this uh, buttstock came off of my uh, AR-15. And I, I kind of like it because of the cheek rest. Every dexterous cheek rest. And I've been trying to practice my shooting right-handed. I'm left-handed. So I've been trying to practice my shooting left -hand, right-handed. So this bus stock is pretty good for that. So we're gonna take this and place it back on. Okay, we're gonna grab the uh, bolt that holds this in. And okay, we're gonna tighten this down. Okay. Too crazy. The uh, second bolt goes in here. <clears throat> what was that? <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. Got a little itch in my throat. And we secure this bolt here. Don't go crazy. Tighten it down. And we're gonna. <coughs> I'm sorry. The Allen screw for the uh, grip. Just line it up and just start threading it in while you have the grip in the air so you can see where you're going. Once you get the, the, the threads on, you just slide it in. The rest will just go down easy. There we are. Now we got ourselves a shortened barrel. A, I believe this is a 22 cc power, uh, a 22 cc or 20 cc uh, power plenum. And we're gonna install our scope back on. just tighten that up later so as you can see we got we were able to shorten our barrel now I just got to sit and wait for my carbon fiber bottle to come in and my uh, bottle adapter and this this uh, project will be complete let me show you what it'll look like once it's completely done so this is the 22 and as you can see, we have the uh, power plenum. The barrel has been shortened. And I'm waiting on the bottle adapter and my carbon fiber bottle for this 25 caliber. So I hope this information was a little helpful for you guys and I hope that I was able to guide you. And um, once, this, once this gun is done, I'll do a second video on this gun with the bottle installed and then we will do some sighting of the scope and we'll do some uh, crony readings on here and we'll see what she's capable of doing. Now keep in mind the bottle is going to hold a lot more air so you're going to get about 180 shots, 200 shots. It all depends on your pressure regulator settings as well. So I'm going to keep this this at a 900, 920, max maybe 950. I know with the bottle it'll do a lot more. And uh, we'll be right back when I'm done with this video and getting this uh, 
project completed. So, hey, YouTubers, I want to thank you for watching my channel. And uh, please, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Follow me because I will continue to bring you interesting videos. And please excuse my uh, delay in, in, in demonstrating uh, how I've done my, my project. And uh, I will keep you posted, man. Thanks for watching. This is Tony FL. Peace and happy tunings.